Hey, how's it going? Uh, welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV episode number nine, and this one is all about your shoulder. Uh, Goalie Training Pro TV is brought to you this week by Price Blocks, priceblocks.com. Uh, if you are a goalie coach or looking for a goalie coach, um, this is where you can list your time, your availability, uh, make it easy for people to find you, book an appointment, pay, and uh, away you go. So there's no calling back and forth. Like I'll leave you a voicemail. You leave me a voicemail. When do you, what do you have available? You call me back. I have this available. Okay, I'll take this one. Oh, sorry. Someone else just booked it. You know, it's sort of a real time booking thing. Anyway, priceblocks.com. But um, what we're talking about today is um, the shoulder. And so this is the last in the series of bottoms up. And again, your Instagram, your Facebook. So if you're like, why is she always looking over there? Why, why is she, why does she look at us? Don't get offended. Cause right now the people on Instagram are saying the exact same thing. Why is she looking over there? Uh, oh, in case you noticed too, I've got a mm, boo-boo on my nose. Cause I was telling you guys in the live Q and A last week that, that the guy on the chairlift, we were, Paul and I were skiing on Friday and it was, uh, Oh, Bill, this will be a good, uh, this will be a good episode for you. It's all about the shoulder. Um, the guy stopped the chair left. Paul and I were downhill skiing on Friday. It was minus 19 plus very windy. So before the wind chills, minus 19. And then it was like minus freezing cold. And I used to cross country ski race. That was my varsity sport. And so I froze in my nose a lot. And the guy stopped the chair left and he said, you have to go in because your nose is white. And I'm like, no, 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 it's fine. It, all, it always does that. <laughs> and, uh, but then sure enough, it was frozen. And uh, so now it's all, it blistered and peeled and it's a little bit crusty. Isn't that thrilling? Anyway, here we go. We're gonna talk about the shoulder. So um, the shoulder is also what's called in school. And um, when I, oh, I just dropped my notes. Like just, it's like grade nine hallway all over again. Um, in uh, university, I'm old enough that it was still called physical education when I took it. It wasn't kinesiology, which sounds so much cooler. Um, but we <laughs> we learned that it's actually called the glenohumeral joint. So your shoulder is the glenohumeral joint. And um, the glenoid is the socket part, and the humerus is the uh, your upper arm part. So the glenohumeral joint, that's your shoulder. Um, but your shoulder, and I'll show you in a second, I'll go through the anatomy so you understand it, because it's actually a really, really cool joint. Um, one of the things I want you to appreciate about the glenohumeral joint is even though I use my hand to kind of describe it, really it's the proportion is way off. So um, think of it a little more like a golf ball. So the, the glenoid fossa is fairly shallow. It's part of what gives us so much range of motion because it's shallow. Our hip socket on the other hand is quite deep and yeah, we can't like swing our leg or like we're not, most of us can't swing our leg around in circles like we can our shoulder because it's a deep socket. Shoulder is a shallow socket, which is great because it gives us mobility a bit about because uh, it's not very stable joint so it's uh, a very shallow socket it's also quite small relative to the head of the feet of the humerus so um, some people describe it, it's a little more almost like a golf ball sitting on a golf tee so a big ball on a fairly shallow socket so kind of picture that in your head um and then i'm going to take off this and it's a little bit in the gym so we'll talk fast um but i want you to appreciate i've got some pictures that i printed off um and then this one so i want you to appreciate the setup of the shoulder so this would be my right shoulder um and so my shoulder blade is on my back this is my clavicle Uh, you can see here's the head of the humerus, the glenoid fossa. Um, so yeah, I'll just show you that. So this is your collarbone here. This is your shoulder blade. Um, and this is called your coracoid process. This is your acromion. This is your coracoid. So acromion and coracoid. And they're like, those are sort of the bumps you feel out here so what I want you to take from that is that the glenoid fossa is actually attached to my shoulder blade so my shoulder blade you know sits here in my back but attached on this side is 
the glenoid fossa. So it's, it's all attached together. And that shoulder blade, your scapulas, can rotate on your rib cage. So I don't know, I have no idea if you can see, but as I bring my arms up to the side, my shoulder blade, now here's the inferior angle of my shoulder blade, as I come down, it drops back down to here. So as I come up, it glides up along my rib cage. As I come down, it glides back down. So again, that's part of what gives us the range of motion too. It's like a dynamic um, shoulder girdle. So it's like, imagine if your pelvis was split in two and when you moved your legs, you know, your pelvis could rotate with it. Imagine how much, then you would talk about doing the splits. Some of you are gonna get ideas like, could I, make my pelvis two parts? No, you can't, it doesn't work that way. The other thing I want you to take from this, this is like, somebody was like, you can't drink too much coffee before you do this. I don't even drink coffee before I do these, I just get so excited. Um, but the other thing I want you to take away from this is if we look at the anatomy, so your shoulder blade floats on your rib cage. Okay, well then what holds your arm on? Like, like your, shoulder blade isn't attached to your rib cage. It's not attached to your, what's called your axial skeleton, your spine or anything like that. Um, so how do your arms just not fall off actually? <laughs> um, so <laughs> hi, Sean. Sean, I'm glad we're still together. Really makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> um, so why don't your arms just fall off? Well, the reason your arms don't just fall off is because of this, <laughs> this spot right here. So this is your sternoclavicular joint. So here's your clavicle or your collarbone. You can feel it here. Some of you have probably broken yours or separated. We'll go over the difference between um, separated shoulder and a dislocated shoulder too. But anyway, so your clavicle, as a reminder, comes out and it has a joint and it interfaces with the scapula. So it's not, it's a joint. It's not like a, like a one continuous piece, your collarbone, and your collarbone rotates and lets you get some motion too. So the only place your arms are attached to your whole body is right here on this little joint, which is crazy. Like to me, that's crazy. I don't know if that's crazy to you or not, but to me, it's crazy. Okay, then I want to talk about the rotator cuff because just like with our hips, oh, this is another good kind of like this one. Um, so from this picture, just appreciate the difference in the surfaces. So this is the outside surface of my shoulder blade. So this is like if we, if we peeled all this away, it's what this would look like. And there's a spine that runs along the back of my, of my scapula. Um, you can see here's my acromioclavicular joint. So this is my acromium and my clavicle. And then this would be the surface of the scapula that's against my rib cage. So this is the back surface. This is the surface that's against my rib cage. And so you can see that there's a difference um, in there as well. And, and that this should nicely shows the glenoid fossa and how big that head of the humerus is. So the reason I wanted to point that out to you is so you can appreciate how the rotator cuff fits. Just like we do with our hips, or, or some of you do with your hips, some of you are like, I think what that, what that Maria girl says makes sense. And you're starting to work more on what I call the rotator cuff of your hips. And you'll see why in a second. A lot of you work on the big muscles that surround your shoulder. So you work on your bench muscles or you do military press or you know, things like that. But you don't take the time to work on the small muscles that actually stabilize your shoulder. So I have a picture of those right now. And I'm going to start by showing you a picture of the muscles that attach on the outside surface of the shoulder blade. So, and they're pretty easy to learn actually. So we have that spine along the scapula. So this is how you learn it when you take anatomy class. You learn that this is the supraspinatus. Supra means above. This is the infraspinatus, which infra, inferior, below. Um, this is called the teres minor. <laughs> just, just a screw with phys ed students and make it hard for them to remember, I, I think. Um, there's no other reason I can think of to call it Terry's Minor. And then this is the undersurface of your, um, this is the undersurface of your shoulder blade. Sorry, I'm bad with my AV. Um, and it's called the subscapularis, which again makes sense. So it's the subscapularis. Um, 
because it's underneath the shoulder blade. So that, that all makes sense. And then just appreciate how it all attaches to the head of the humerus. These are the, um, these are the tendons where the muscle attaches. And so you can see how it really very nicely, I'll show you again. So see how these all attach and how they really can control the head of the humerus and the rotation of your arm and stabilize that. So those are the muscles of the rotator cuff. I guess too, I'll show you, your shoulder has a labrum just like your hip. So here it is here. I'll show you that's the labrum of your hip, of your shoulder right here. And again, it, it's, um, it's really important in the shoulder because it, it gives a little more depth um, to the joint so that it, it get, gets it a little bit more stability. So the biggest thing in terms of keeping a healthy shoulder, maximizing the performance of your shoulder, and it's important for you guys, and I don't know that you appreciate it, because if you don't have full degrees of freedom of your shoulder or good range of motion, if you have this kind of posture, you know, even try it. Like, so round your shoulders forward. First of all, get in your ready position, which brings you forward a little bit anyway. Then round your shoulders forward, and then try to, you know, <laughs> position like a glove save or a little reach. It's, it's hard to do, so then what do you have to do? You have to turn your body to, to get your arm where it needs to be, which is gonna put you out of position. Not to mention you're holding your joint in an end range, it's, it's gonna actually add a little bit more fatigue. So that's, a, that's an important key that you should appreciate. Um, plus it's gonna reduce the risk of injury. The key point in this, or the key thing is really, scapular control so controlling using these muscles to control your shoulder blade so that your rotator cuff muscles and your big powerful muscles are in a position to do their job and that's something that we lose sight of all the time when i worked at the fowler kennedy sport medicine clinic in the um, physio department uh, helping to rehab athletes almost every pretty much every athlete who came in with a shoulder injury we, the very first thing we started with was scapular stabilization. Probably 70% of them, that was all they needed. They got better and we never saw them again. So what is scapular stabilization? And it's so silly, but it has a lot to do with posture. So you know when your, your parents tell you like, you know, sit up tall or, you know, it, it really is, <laughs> it is that important, I hate to tell you. But when you, when you get your posture, don't just extend and kind of stick out your chest. Think of first, think of, imagine you're getting pulled, you know, like a string coming out the top of your head that's pulling you longer. You all just sat up taller, I know you did. Um, so that's one part of it. The other thing we get is a rounded shoulder posture because we sit, we sit in school, we kind of hang out there, we sit at home, and some of you even carry that onto the ice, which is a really bad habit. And um, Thomas Myers, uh, yeah, Thomas Myers um, says something like, um, like ha um, habit becomes posture, posture becomes structure. So he means that, you know, we just have a habit of going like this sometimes, like we're not always like that, but we have a little habit of slouching. Well, then that, um, that habit becomes posture and then that becomes sort of our go-to and we're always like that and then that becomes structure so a lot of us it's not even just oh we'll just pull your shoulders back because we're so tight and short here that we really can't so when we try to do it and we want to get the feeling we end up extending our back because then it feels like we're there which isn't the way to go so the number one thing we start on is just a scapular retraction and it looks like nothing. So here are the inferior angles of my shoulder blades. And all I'm gonna do is just squeeze them together like that much and hold it like that for five to 10 seconds and then slowly relax. So you can see from the front when I do it, this is all it looks like, like nothing and then I slowly relax. When I'm coaching and teaching people to do it, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit further from you so you can see. If I see their elbows go back behind them, 
that's a, right away a red flag that they're not doing it properly. Or again, if their back extends, they're not doing it properly. So really just from the side, it just looks like that and there shouldn't be any change in my posture that way. So that's, that's sort of, if you wanna work, that is the plank, the basic plank of scapular stabilization. And again, I, it seems so, oh, I know, but give me the good exercises, you know, the advanced exercises. Like, that's the number one thing that you need to do. So, you know, just start there. Trust me, it's, you need that good foundation. Okay, we're gonna talk about injuries now. We're gonna talk about the difference between dislocations, subluxations, and separations. So, um, and this is kind of a little like drives little pet peeve of mine when people get it mixed up, but they just don't know. So I know you're not doing it on purpose to make me mad. <laughs> a, se a separated shoulder is a clavicle. So either at the AC joint or the SC joint, that joint has got compressed and you basically sprained those joints, much like you would sprain an ankle. Often it happens when you get squished. So you see it more in skaters when they get squished into the boards and kind of accordioned like that. Um, but you know, it could happen to you too. If somebody falls on you, something like that. Really uncomfortable. Um, not much you can do for it. Just give it time to heal. If it's a grade three, which is a complete, so there's a grade one, which is like basically just like, oh, I just tweaked my ankle, um, except in your shoulder. <laughs> grade two is like, yeah, you've torn some of the fibers and those are ligaments that they connect bone to bone. You've torn some of those fibers and you know, it might even be a little bit bump like bumped up a, a bit a grade three is like no you've complete you know you've really blown that thing out and I, I think sometimes they do have to do surgery for those ones um, or sometimes you know people just go around with a funny bump on their shoulder so that's a separation it's a thing of it's a clavicle shoulder girdle kind of thing a dislocation is the ball and socket and a dislocation is boom <laughs> like it is out um, and unless you just always, always dislocate, um, it's going to have to be put back in by somebody. Um, and that's uncomfortable. Now, here's the thing that happens with those that sometimes we forget about. When there's tension there, you know, there's the, the head of the humerus is being held in the socket. So when there's enough force to grind that thing out and then grind it back in, you get two things. You'll often... Um, tear the labrum where it goes out and comes back in so you'll make sort of a groove that's called a bank heart lesion sometimes it will take a little piece of bone with it that's called a bony bank heart um, but you'll also get a defect on the on the back side of the um, humeral head where again and i'm talking about an anterior dislocation so on the posterior side of the humeral head you'll get a little groove where it's gone in and come out again that's called a hill sax lesion so sometimes that tear to the labrum is a problem and it needs to be uh repaired um sometimes it's not a problem per se although you know now we have a nice little pathway for that thing to come out again so it's made the joint less stable which again is a problem a subluxation is just uh, mm, like it doesn't come right out. It just kind of shifts in there and it gives you the heebie-jeebies and it can, it'll be really sore or it can be really sore and, uh, you know, still take time to rehab and things like that. But it, it's not a full boom, boom dislocation. So usually if it's just like, like, I think my shoulder popped out, you know, but it's not like, oh, my shoulder is out, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, if your shoulder's out. Funny story, when I was a strength coach at Western, um, I would um, be on the bench for for the um, men's basketball games. And there was a guy on our team who had, Kyle, he had um, instability in his shoulders. I actually knew him since high school because he'd be in the clinic getting treated for his shoulder instability. So I was sitting there and the two student trainers, um, who it's their job was to look after people. I was just the strength coach, but the, actually, it was funny because the head coach named me an assistant coach, uh, which was very nice of him. So then I felt obliged to be on the bench for all the games. But like, yeah. Um, but anyway, so Kyle's flashing through the key and he bumps a guy and you just see and they sort of have a look on their face. And he was like, it was like when a 
dog gets sprayed by a skunk <laughs> it runs right straight to you know you're like don't run to me he ran right straight to me and he sat down and the trainers jumped out of the way and he sat down in their chair and he's saying put it back in put it back in and I'd obviously never done it I'd learned how to do it in our sport medicine class but I never had to do it so and our team was really good that year and, it, and so there were lots of students in the stands so I'm thinking oh my god we're both like oh god so I'm doing what I was told to do and hoping 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 it'll and then clunk it goes in and like he screamed I think I screamed a little the whole crowd went <gasps> it was it was kind of uh it was kind of cool at the end but at the time it was like oh my god why did you run to me you dumb dumb um but so that's a dislocation and then even if you do so it's not like what you see you guys probably don't even know lethal weapon but like in lethal weapon Mel Gibson like gets out of the thing and he just goes you know smashes his shoulder on the thing to put it back that's not how it works and even then you know it's like okay Kyle you need to go to the emergency room now get an x-ray make sure it wasn't a bony bank card and that there isn't a bone fragment stuck in there now that has to be removed okay so that's those are those are the biggies um then uh and in goaltenders dislocations often happen you're like reaching out to cover a puck and somebody falls on you that's a common mechanism for that impingement um so you can sort of see from this picture how like here's the um this is the acromion and the clavicle and then here's the supraspinatus coming in and it goes under that like almost like a little tunnel um, so you can appreciate I hope you can appreciate and even you can see this hook of the coracoid process Where is it? Oh, over here this hook of the coracoid process I'm looking at the wrong picture um, and how when I move my shoulder those things could get pinched those those tendons could get pinched under these little hooks and bridges that they cross pass through so the shoulder is amazing because we get so much range but it also means there's so much stuff packed into a really tight area so things can get pinched and that's what an impingement is um, and you can impinge the long head of your biceps and usually it does it really feels like a pinch like you know that's sore and, and so again the number one thing we do is well like <laughs> squeeze your shoulder blades back and work on that posture because too if I'm here I'm gonna it's way easier for me to pinch even if we do this don't do this if you have a sore shoulder or get a sore shoulder do not do this but for the rest of us um, if we kind of like get crappy posture not like crazy like we're not gonna like get like this but if we just like let our shoulders roll forward and then we try to make a circle with our arm here it kind of gets flat and then we can come up and around that's fine but if I just get here in my good posture do you see how it just goes so smoothly so if we have a little bit of crappy posture and then we're doing stuff or even lifting weights and we're kind of grinding on that getting things pinched grinding on them it's gonna eventually make it irritated enough that your shoulder says no way forget it stop so you can get an impingement you get a tendinosis um, and again like the first thing we do is like do this with your shoulder blades learn how to stabilize your scapula um, rotator cuff tear usually something you do something and you feel like oh you know and sometimes it you'll be like oh no I think it's okay but then you'll go to reach for something in the upper cupboard and be like oh that hurts you know or putting on your jacket you'd be like it's fine but just doing this thing hurts um, so that's a rotator cuff tear and again depends on the degree um, any injuries like that just go see a really good sport physiotherapist have them assess it so that you know what your plan of attack is we talked about a torn labrum um, and usually that is associated with a dislocation or an instability in the shoulder so coming back the key to controlling it is um, scapular like posture scapular positioning then getting it nice um, stable rotator cuff so again it's like some of the hip exercises we do the idea isn't to do as much weight as you can the idea is to make give those muscles some stamina to get get them doing what they're supposed to do so not letting other bigger muscles take over and do their job um, it's not to sort of oh, I can do 75 pound external rotations that's that's going to be counterproductive to you so 
I'm just going to tie this loosely with the hopes that I'll be able to untie it at the end of this. So, you know, people, um, like, I'll say, oh, do you have, like, yellow TheraBand? No, no, I use, I use the black. It's too heavy. It just, these muscles, if we use a heavy weight, we can do it, but other muscles are going to be helping out, and then we're not really getting the benefit we want. So you want to work on your external rotation, you know, and we just do it, like, we start at neutral. So just here keeping my elbow tucked into the side so this you know <laughs> isn't it it's a it's a small range of motion that's all I get and it's okay it doesn't make me a better person if I can like get <laughs> that much further in school I put my hand here so I feel that I'm just rotating that humerus I'm not going you know and using my scapula to help and um, then we would go internal rotation when we go internal rotation we, um, we, we usually go knuckles to belly button because that's sort of the line of pull on the muscle fiber. So I start with my knuckles on my belly button and I come out and I come in. And this is hard because I really want my elbow to stay put. I don't want it to be like, again, like, you know, that. It's just a nice rotation. So that's internal and external rotation. Those are a couple really basic ones. We also use a lot of, I love this one, um, it's just a W. So if I start with my palms up and my elbows at my side and then I pull apart and I make kind of a W with my arms as I pull apart and then I come back down. So I tell the troops, you're gonna, like you're carrying a tray of drinks and then you're making a W without extending your back. So that's what you'll wanna do. Just there. And again, not forcing it to try to get an extra centimeter of range. Um, so those are ones I'd start with, and then we progress to other, other exercises. Um, then what we work on too is like when we're doing arm exercises or, you know, a landmine press or something, is making sure we're keeping a nice stable shoulder blade as we do that, so that we're not. Um, we'll use a press for an example. We're not going, you know, we're not starting it by elevating our shoulder. Um, what, that's a real common pattern is to elevate your shoulders and use your upper traps for everything. We want to sort of get those shoulders down a little bit, down slightly and back to get a good position. So, you know, even feel like if these are just like all the time, anytime you do anything, like if you row, like I can row pretty heavy without my upper traps going on. Like there's no reason when you pull, you have to elevate your shoulder, but it's a really common um, compensation pattern that we spend a lot of time trying to break that habit. <laughs> and then um, keep in mind that you need to balance your pushes with your pulls. People do a lot more pushing exercises because you can see those muscles in the mirror. People wanna have a bigger, more developed uh, chest um, so that they look good. And, which is great, but we forget to do pulling exercises. Also, people who just work out with body weight, it's actually pretty hard unless you have a chin up or can do chin ups um, to balance it out. So at home, you know, tons of people be like, oh, I just, I started doing push ups and I'm just do, try to do a hundred push ups a day. Well, like that's a lot and there's no pulling going on to balance it. So it's, you know, you're making those muscles stronger and stronger and stronger and working them here more and more and more. So it's a problem. So you need to balance out. If I'm doing a pushing exercise, I need to do a pulling exercise and they need to be balanced or even, you know, we usually do a little bit extra in terms of getting this retraction because so many of you are really prone to this kind of a posture. Um, I'll give you one more little goalie one that we do. So again, start with the other stuff. You have to have good stabilization first, but we'll do it with very, very light weights. Even these are just two and a half pound plates, but you know, like, so don't even do, oh, I could do that with fifth. I did that with 15s. You know, it's because again, you're going to be pulling in big muscles that we're not trying to work, but it's just, um, uh, goalie, I just call it goalie figure eights, but just to build a little stamina in the shoulder. So if we start here and we make a figure eight this way, but I'm trying to go fairly quick, but again, keep my shoulders down. So I shouldn't be, you know, <laughs> using everything to make it work. And then we'll come out to the side and do the same kind of thing. Then the, this is a progression. Then we might get a little more into like our glove position with a bit of external rotation. So now 
we're getting a bit of those um, external rotators of the rotator cuff and then go figure eights in that pattern. Um, and that's just nice to build a little bit of stamina in the shoulders because, I don't know, probably lots of you don't notice it, but you know, if the play is, and I'm terrible, I'm just, I'm just terrible, but if the play's in my end a lot, like, and I'm really trying to think about my glove position and keeping my glove where I want it, my shoulder actually gets tired. If I'm, if we're just doing passing before we play, you know, and working on our passing, my shoulder gets exhausted just trying to pass. So that's something that we use to get a little bit stronger. That's it. That's what you need to know about your shoulder. And there's a million other things you can know about the shoulder. It's a fascinating invention, but that's, I think, your, if we're on a need-to-know basis, that's what you need to know. Thanks for joining me on Goalie Training Pro TV, Episode 9. I'll be back next week with Episode 10. I don't know what I'm going to talk about yet, so if you have a suggestion, <laughs> leave it in the comment box so I can, so I can do that for you next week because I'm, I'm open to ideas. We've covered head to toe the body. These are all posted over on Facebook. Um, Facebook. We're on the Facebook. Duh. These are all posted over on YouTube. Uh, the, my channel is Goalie Training Pro TV. In case you missed one, we talked about the ankle, the knee, the hip, the back, your melon. Uh, we pretty much covered it all. See you guys next time. Cheers.